1928, Carl Theodor Dreyer's The Passion of Joan Arc hit the film studios. This 1928 silent film black and white production narrowed in on Joan, Ar Joan of Arc's trial um, and eventual execution at the hands of the British after being caught. The portrayal of Joan of Arc was done by Renée Jean Falconetti, who was formerly a stage actress but was spotted by um, Dreyer in an amateur theater in sometime before 1928. So she had been acting since 1918, um, but she had only appeared in one film beforehand, La Comtesse de Saint-Hervé in 1917. And so by the time she played 19-year-old Joan of Arc, she was 35 years old. Dreyer used impressive film techniques that would be emulated by Orson Welles, very close-up scenes, um, black and white shots that were made more stark for the peasants and the judges while Joan of Arc was shown in softer gray tones. Um, Dreyer had Falconetti known as Phoebe uh, kneel on hard stone to capture her pained expressions. Um, he also had a set built to look like a town square but the film never shows the full set and in this way creates this atmosphere of fear and dread. Dreyer was a very impressive Danish filmmaker and screenwriter and so he uh, made films after Joan of Arc such as Michael, Vampire, Day of Wrath, but Joan of Arc was considered his greatest film. When he made Joan of Arc, he worked from transcripts of Joan of Arc's trial, and at this time, um, European and American filmmakers focused on the legends that made America and Europe what they are. So there were a lot of Christian films. Um, in America, you saw cowboy films, um, you saw southern heritage films from Griffith in America, and in Europe, you saw a lot of crusades and... Uh, Christian imagery films. So this was something that was common for film at the time. It's not so common today, unfortunately. Um, but Dreyer was a, a director who had joined the film industry as a writer of title cards for silent films. And so his ability to understand narrative was incredibly skilled. He was initially hired by Nordisk Film in 1913, and he left Denmark to work in the French film industry where he saw Falconetti. While living in France, France he met Jean Cocteau, Jean Hugo, and other members of the French artistic scene. Joan of Arc, or The Passion of Joan of Arc, premiered to the public on April 21st, 1928 at Palo de Stridat in Copenhagen. The French premiere was held in Paris six months later in October. Dreyer had shot around 85,000 meters of footage, which he cut down to approximately 2,200 meters of footage. Because of this, there has always been some doubt about the film's original length. Censors did cut out uh, Joan of Arc's bloodletting and some torture scenes, and so different versions of the film were found to exist. Dreyer himself said the film is 2,400 meters long and runs for about an hour and a half, but a Danish censor card's uh, presence for the film on the premiere lists the length as 2,210 meters. Prints of the film were censored and the film itself was made of highly flammable nitrate film and on December, uh, in December 1928, the original negative was destroyed in a fire at UFA in Berlin where it was stored. Dreyer was a very ambitious filmmaker and so he and his editor, Mrs. Oswald, started to cut a new version of the film based on footage that had not been stored at UFA. And so um, this was something that he was committed to but the film was not entirely lost. After 1936, Henry Langlois, the head of the Cinématique Francois, which was a newly founded French film museum, located a worn and incomplete print. 
And then in 1952, another find was made. A French film writer, Loduca, claimed to have found the second negative in Paris, which was thought to have been lost in another fire. This second negative was longer, and the image quality was better than the print found by Cinématique Francois. And so the movie was reissued again in in the 1950s. Then, in the 1980s, a remarkable discovery occurred. In 1981, a print of Joan of Arc appeared at a mental hospital in Norway while staff was cleaning the hospital. Two prints had apparently been sent from Paris to Copenhagen for the premiere in April 1928 and were previously considered lost, but now one of them reemerged. Dykemark Siegehaus is a mental hospital in the Oslo suburb of Asker, and the print was discovered in its original packaging with a shipping note addressed to consultant physician Harold Arneson, dated 1928 and shipped from Copenhagen. This was an incredible find because of the fire that occurred in December 1928 at UFA. So the timing was really key here. The first box found at the mental asylum still contained the original Danish censor's card. So who was this consultant physician, physician Harold Arneson? He was born in 1862 and lived until 1953. He became a consultant physician and in the 1920 to 1929 period was the director of Dykemark Siegehaus. Beyond medicine, he was especially interested in the French Revolution and apparently had attended a study trip to Paris around 1924, and he acquired books and periodicals from the days of the French Revolution in the 1700s. So this might have explained why he was receiving a copy of Joan of Arc, which was based on the original trial transcripts of Joan of Arc. The film was never released in Norway, where Dykemark Siegehaus is located, maybe because it was not a popular commercial success in Copenhagen, but did Harold Arneson know someone involved with the film? It's It's not clear. It's also interesting because residents and workers of Dykemark Siegehaus, which seems like a very close-knit, tight community, it seems like a friendly community uh, from photos, um, remembered that the film had been screened several times throughout the 1920s. So was Dr. Arneson trying to figure out the meaning in the film? Was he interested in how patients would react or how staff would react? It's really not known. Another interesting component is the timing of Arneson's leadership of Dykemark Siegehaus. He was no longer the director of Dykemark Siegehaus in 1929. By 1929, Dykemark Siegehaus had been under the control of Rolf Gessing, and he was a Norwegian psychiatrist. He was the director of Dykemark Siegehaus from 1929 to 1949 and he really transformed Dykemark Hospital even more into a place for the, its humane approach, uh, which was unique and quite forward at the time. He had an office in the attic of the Dykemark Administration Building, and he had steps that would lead up to a plateau on the roof where he would stand and observe the moon to see what possible influence it had on his patients. Um, most of the patients were suffering from mental disorders, and he also was interested in um, zodiac signs, and so he collaborated with a meteorologist to determine the impact on his patients. From 1932 to 1937, he was the leader of a Norwegian psychiatric association, and he was also a member of the Norwegian Academy of Science. Is this how he might have met members of the film community with these high-flying um, venues that would have had events, it's, it's not known. But Rolf Gessing was a very impressive doctor, and in 1955 he received St. Olaf's Order for his work, and in 1957 he received the St. Halvard Medal. Another component of the film's finding was Renee Falconetti, the main actress herself. During World War II, she escaped from France to Switzerland, then to Brazil, and then to Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm not sure if she spent any time in Norway, but she really struggled with her mental health all her life. And so I'm not sure if she was in contact with psychiatrists at the Zyka House. 
or at Dykemark, I'm just not sure. Unfortunately, in 1946, she had been starving herself and died. Some people are quick to claim that it was the director Dryher's impact on Falconetti that caused so much mental illness throughout her life, but she, I don't think that was the case. He wasn't a sadist. Um, he just wanted to make a great film, and unfortunately, Falconetti struggled with mental illness before the filming of Joan of Arc. It's a great film, and if you get a chance to watch it, I highly recommend it.